hello. Some of my very favorite videos to make are tier ranking videos. And so I thought it would be fun to do a tier ranking video for all of the books that I have read for the first half of the year. So this includes only books read between the months of January through the end of June, which I believe is a total of 58 books, which is way more than I thought it would be at this point. Previously, I have included graphic novels and manga. I don't wanna do it that way this year. I would just like to include the novels and novellas that I've read and leave out graphic novels and manga for this list. If you guys are interested, I could do at the end of the year a tier ranking graphic novels and manga video. Just let me know on that. So let's go over the categories that I've created this time. I have adjusted them slightly. I've used some of the same ones. So the best of the best is bomb.com because I haven't left, I guess, like the MySpace days when people used to say that. That's like my greatest of all time tier, but I feel like that's hard to say because greatest of all time is a very select few books. So bomb.com means best of the best of what I have read this year so far. Those are my favorites. The next category down is still thinking about it. So these are books that I really, really liked. They weren't quite the best of the best, but they're still in my mind, ruminating around, making me think about them. I really, really liked these books. Middle of the line here, we have No Regrets Man. That's like your three star category for the most part, I would say. Books I'm glad that I read, books that really I'm not thinking about much anymore. It was enjoyable for the time being. It has sort of not stuck with me or left a lasting impact, which I guess you could say about still thinking about it. It's something that left an impact on me, but wasn't a favorite. So then the fourth tier down is maybe you'll like it, question mark, because it means it's not for me. That's my polite way of saying I did not love this book but I do see why other people might enjoy it. So that's what that category is for. And then the bottom of the tier is this isn't it. <laughs> this isn't it. And uh, I think we can gather what that means. So let's get into the tier ranking since there are 58 books and that's a lot to get through. Okay, so first up, it looks like we have Crossroads of Twilight. We're starting off strong book 10 in the Wheel of Time series. Well, do you guys know where this is going to go? Maybe you'll like it. This this whole series is not a series for me, man, but I see why people like it. I, I, I get that it's a fan favorite and it has a following, but it's just sincerely, absolutely not for me. So we're gonna see a lot of books. Do you know what? No, no, I need to be genuine. This frankly is not it. This is not it, Robert Jordan. Um, this is not how you write a good fantasy book, in my opinion. And I know that others might disagree with me, but this just is not it. The Bone Hunters. <sighs> okay, here is the strange thing. Because for my enjoyment level, I want to put it in maybe you'll like it. But to be honest, it has to go in still thinking about it. Because I still continuously am thinking about the Bone Hunters. It was not written for my tastes exactly of what I genuinely tend to enjoy most out of the Malazan series, but here I am months later. I read this in January. It is July 5th today that I'm filming this, and I'm still thinking about the Bone Hunters by Steven Erickson, which by the way is the sixth book in the Malazan series. So I have to put it in that category. Okay, next we have The Two Towers, which is obviously the second book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. You guys know all of these are going to end up in the bomb.com category. They are my favorites. I think I'm gonna put The Return of the King above The Two Towers. We might as well find Fellowship of the Ring. I think I'm gonna order these this way. Actually, you know what? Let's just put The Hobbit up here too. I'm sorry to rush through all of these, but it makes more sense in my mind. Hobbit is bomb.com. That is a favorite thing of all time for me. Lord of the Rings trilogy is my favorite fantasy series ever written. So they all belong in bomb.com and greatest of all time. But as far as how I enjoyed each book, The Hobbit is where it's at for me. It is so precious, so heartwarming, such a feel good journey that I have to put it first. Then I liked The Return of the King the most, then The Two Towers, then The Fellowship of the Ring. I feel like that's an unpopular opinion, 
but I would love to know how do you guys rank those? Next up, we have the Silmarillion. I'm putting this in No Regrets Man because while I am glad I read it, that's about all I can say right now because it requires a reread for me personally to really understand what Tolkien was telling us. It's a lot of information for me to grasp at once and I just need some time to sit with it and I need to reread it. So just no regrets. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I have experienced it one time and that's where it stands for now. Okay, Between the World and Me by ta Coates. This is a nonfiction book that I'm really glad I read. It sort of spurred me on to read a lot more nonfiction, so I'm very glad I read it. Um, it's not that I'm necessarily still thinking about that book, but I'm really, really happy that I read it and own it, and I will reread it in the future. The Princess Diaries, I'm still thinking about, absolutely. This was such an impactful book to me, so relatable. I've talked about it nonstop, so I won't continue to go on and on now, but I love that book dearly. I don't know if I'll ever stop thinking about it. Then we have Nemesis Games. This is hard. I think that, to be honest, I still think about Nemesis games pretty frequently. And that's not just one I read and I'm done with it because I'm currently reading that series that had so much character driven backstory information that I loved. So I'm still thinking about that one. Reaper's Gale is bomb.com. I can't put it above the Lord of the Rings, but I guess it would be really close. Reaper's Gale is one of my favorite Molasm books that I've read this year specifically, but just in general, it is one of my favorite. It is so good. So that has to go in bomb.com. Babylon's Ashes. So the reason I'm putting that in Maybe You Like It, which excuse me, I should have said, Nemesis Games is book five, Babylon's Ashes is book six. The reason I'm putting it in Maybe You'll Like It is because I still rated it maybe three and a half stars, but it's very action heavy, very, um, full of battle scenes and has a lot of those scenes to read through, which I don't prefer, but I know a lot of people do. Therefore, maybe you will like it if you love action scenes. Hood Feminism is one I'm definitely still thinking about. Um, I really enjoyed that book. It is a nonfiction book about who feminism encompasses and how we should change that focus just a little bit to prioritize um, some people who have been left out of the movement, perhaps, I guess you could say. So I am definitely still thinking about that one. It is one of the books that is nonfiction that I enjoyed most this year. Vita Nostra. Oh, I am absolutely still thinking about that book. That is one that, did I put it in my favorites list? I don't know. You guys will have seen that so far. <laughs> that just is a book that you cannot stop thinking about. The ideas presented within it, the themes that it touches upon, it's just brilliant, maybe a little bit too smart for me, but I'm very glad I read it and it's one that will always stick with me. The Binding. I guess that's gonna go in No Regrets Man because I really enjoyed it at the time being, but it has sort of left my mind. Um, I don't think about it often. I had a really good time reading it. I occasionally think about it, I suppose, because I liked the romance in it and it was a pretty tragic book, I would say. But for the most part, I'm glad I read it. I've moved on from it. Digital minimalism. You guys know I'm still thinking about that. I think about that every single day because I try to incorporate those practices into my everyday life. So I think about the things that this book said, the ideas it presented, the way that it suggested to make changes on a daily basis, perhaps even multiple times a day. So I'm not gonna forget that one anytime soon. Same thing with the Leave Only Footprints, which is a nonfiction book about this guy whose fiance decided that she didn't wanna marry him any longer and then he decided to leave on this trip to go to all the national parks. So it's kind of the combination of dealing with both of those things, which sort of both relate to me a bit and I found it very impactful and it's a, a topic of something I really, really love, travel and visiting national parks and it had a lot of really great information. So I definitely am still thinking about that book. It involves a goal of mine to constantly be traveling and learning to be alone. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Okay, that belongs in bomb.com. That is a new favorite of the year. I love Alex Stern so much. I love this story. I, I am dying for the sequel to come out. I know that it's not going to be anytime soon, but I just truly love Ninth House so much. I know it's not a book for everyone, but especially being this like paranormal fantasy, it really shouldn't work for me, but it did. 
so well and I loved what Leigh Bardugo did in her first like adult book so I I have to put that in my favorites. In the dream house I'm definitely still thinking about. That was another wonderful nonfiction book that I read this year talking about a lot of abuse in relationships but a lot deeper than that and hmm, should I leave it there? Yeah that feels right. I've got a lot of nonfiction in my still thinking about it category. Okay. Ugh. Oh, we're only gonna talk about this one a couple more times this year. That is The Darkness That Comes Before by R. Scott Baker. This isn't it, man. I enjoyed Crossroads of Twilight more than I enjoyed my experience of reading that. Just in case this is your first time watching one of my videos and you don't understand, I can link my review. I think that this book has all kinds of great ideas, philosophical themes presented, the writing style was wonderful, and there's a lot that this book was doing that I really enjoyed, but there was also a lot of content that I personally don't wanna read about just for my own preferences and mm, mental health state. And so that's why this isn't it. All right, we've got a whole lot of Dune books. And I think you guys know that those are going to go in the bomb.com category, every single one. So let's see. We'll start with book number two, Dune Messiah, the sequel to Dune. And then we have book three, which is Children of Dune, which is my favorite of the sequels. So Children of Dune definitely comes before Dune Messiah. I just absolutely adore Children of Dune. But then we have a God Emperor of Dune, which I love just after Children of Dune. Then we have Heretics of Dune, which I love a little bit less than Dune Messiah. And then we have Chapter House, which I do like more than Heretics. So yeah, it goes three, four, two, six, five. <laughs> that is my my ranking of the Dune sequels, but they all belong in the bomb.com category. They are all favorites of all time for me, my favorite sci-fi series ever written. So I absolutely love that. Then we have When You Trap a Tiger, which this is hard because I wanna put it in no regrets. I absolutely loved reading this book. I think it was a fabulous middle grade, but it it, it's a very impactful story, but it's not something I'm still thinking about on a daily basis. So I'm putting it in no regrets. I'm very glad I read it and experienced the story, but it's not still hanging out in my mind quite as much as some of the other books. House in the Cerulean Sea, surprisingly even though it's one of my favorite books of the year because of me reading it when I needed it at a time that I needed it most that I needed some type of joy and happiness then I put it in my favorites for that reason but to be honest it is a no regrets book so probably my favorite of them like I'm very happy I experienced it but it is not something that I think about every day every week every month it's just sort of something I know is there I can pull out of my back pocket if I need to be happy on a rainy day then I could reread it I do think I will reread it but it's not something thematically that sticks with me that much so it's just going in the no regrets I'm happy to have read it then we have Lady Hotspur I'm still thinking about that one to be honest I I absolutely love The Queens of Innes Lear, and this is the indirect sequel to that companion novel, I suppose. It got off to a bit of a rough start because I didn't know too much about Lady Hotspur, but once I looked into it and found out more about that work of Shakespeare, I enjoyed it a lot more. It is some of the most stunning writing I've ever read in my life by Tessa Groton. She's a favorite of mine. The characters were so impactful, their relationships, the earthy, witchy type of magic. It's my favorite. So that is definitely one that I really, really loved. And it's one I'm very excited to reread. I think most of these in my still thinking about it category are books that I cannot wait to reread to get something new out of or to get more out of. Oh boy, then we have Hyperion by Dan Simmons. So this is tricky because I think I'm going to intermix this with the Dune novels. So I'm going to put it right after Dune, Children of Dune and God Emperor of Dune above these three. I do love the Dune series as a whole more than I love the Hyperion Cantos. Like ranking them as individual books is really hard. I'm going to leave it here because it's like I said, I like Dune more than Hyperion, but they are so, so, so close that it's really hard to compare. 
Um, I feel like I should just then grab the fall of Hyperion, which I'm going to put there. And then also Endymion because Endymion was just fabulous. So we have <laughs> Children of Dune, God Emperor of Dune, Hyperion, the fall of Hyperion and Endymion, and then three more of the Dune sequels. I, I get that it's probably a bit confusing for you, but that's just how I enjoyed each of the books, I suppose. The Burning God, I'm still thinking about, but I guess let's put it at the end of the books that I'm still thinking about because I love Rin so much. I love the Poppy War series. I love RF Kuang. I love some of the choices that she made throughout the ending of this book. While I didn't think it was perfect, I think I still rated it four and a half or five stars. I really liked the conclusion. And it's just a story that I read in January that is still sticking with me that I still periodically think about. So while I see why some people say it has flaws, it's one that I absolutely adore and it stuck with me. And I really think I'll reread this series one day. Oh, The Bone Crier's Moon. Okay, so this is hard because I think I rated this like a four out of five stars too, something like that. You know, I'm putting it in the end of No Regrets. I do not regret reading this book, but I also didn't think that it was the best thing I ever read. It wasn't as impactful. There's definitely some things that made me cringe about this book, but I don't regret reading it. It wasn't a bad time, and I do recommend it if you like young adult fantasy romance. I guess I'm going to also just go ahead and lump that in with Kingdom of the Wicked. I'm going to put just above that. That's another young adult fantasy romance-ish type of book. Um, I might continue on with that one. I really adore Carrie Mandiscalco. I don't regret reading it. It brought me joy at the time of reading it, and it was a great audiobook listen, but I'm not still thinking about that one. Now, Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker, which is a pseudonym for Sean and McGuire. I have to put this one in the still thinking about it because of how much I loved the messages. It was so delightful, charming. It's one that I'm eagerly anticipating the sequel to, and it's not something that I just feel like I've read and I'm done with. It's something that I want to read to my nephew. It's something that I want to reread again. I just thought it was a wonderful story. It's a middle grade novella, so I feel like it has to go in one category above. No regrets. Okay, Persephone Station. While I'm putting this at the top of the category, this isn't it. It had a lot of issues, a lot of pacing issues, a lot of character issues, a lot of even issues with the way that the author explained certain identities and such. I think that there's potential here. I think maybe the author was trying to do too much, but the key point of that is there was a lot of missed potential. So the author had really cool ideas. This, this really cool book could have came out of and they were so unfocused and in different directions that it just completely missed the mark and didn't work. But I would probably try something from this author again in the future. I will say that the cover is spot on. That one was bomb.com. Um, here we have the sixth book for the School for Good and Evil. So I'm just putting this in No Regrets. This is a middle grade fantasy series that I talk about quite frequently on my channel and I absolutely love. So I definitely have no regrets of reading that. I'm glad I read it. I will absolutely continue on if this author writes more in this world, but it's not something I think about consistently. I think for Piranesi by Susanna Clark, I will put in the bomb.com category just because it's something that I think about very often, but I liked it more than some of the other ones listed in the still thinking about it category. It did make it to my favorites of the year list. It was very precious and thought provoking and just, I'm so impressed with what the author did in such a few amount of pages that it's, it's a favorite. So it has to go with my other favorites. Lightbringer. Okay, no regrets. So this is the conclusion to the trilogy by Claire Legrand. I will put this at the top of the no regrets category because this is a young adult series I've been reading for quite some time. I do quite enjoy these characters and I think that it's one of the young adult fantasy series that I still really enjoy and I think it's a step above some of the other young adult fantasy that I have read within the past several years. So I'm glad that I finished the trilogy out and I probably will pick up what she writes next if it's as interesting because this one deals with angels and demons, which I really love. Eva Evergreen, that will be near the beginning of the no regrets list. Oh my gosh, it was so precious, so heartwarming. I'm so glad I read it, but I don't think about it 
I haven't really thought about it since then. So I do highly recommend it and encourage others to read it, but it's not something that was super impactful, um, but I think is an excellent middle grade choice. And I absolutely will read the sequel when it comes out. The Devil and the Dark Water. So that is also no regrets. I'm really, really happy that I read that book but it wasn't something that had this huge emotional impact. It, it wasn't thematically impactful as much as some of the others. It was a solid fantasy, almost horror creepy atmosphere set at the sea. I would love to read more books like it, but it doesn't quite make it to the top two categories. The Midnight Library. This isn't it, man. I'm gonna say that goes below the darkness that comes before, and y'all know how much I liked that. And uh, it deals with really heavy subject matter, including suicide, and I don't think it took it seriously. And myself, among many others, felt mildly offended by the way that it handled the subject matter. And I personally wish I didn't finish reading it. It just was not, not it. The Shadow of the Gods. Uh, am I gonna put it in bomb.com or am I gonna put it in still thinking about it? I don't know what to do. It was like one of my favorite starts. I'm gonna put it in bomb.com at the end. That's just what my gut is telling me. So we're just gonna put it where I feel like it's best. It was one of the best starts to a fantasy series that I have read this year. I think that everything that John Gwen did in this book was superb. I had like minor nit pick complaints, which is why I gave it a 4.75 out of five stars. But overall, I could not be happier with my reading experience of giving John Gwen another chance. And oh, it's just such a good time. It was such a book that I enjoyed reading the entire way through. Then we have A Court of Silver Flames. Um, I'm not still thinking about this one, but I did give it five out of five stars and I'm very happy that I read it. So I guess my categories are a bit confusing since I said the no regrets might be three stars. It was a solid five out of five star book, but I'm not still thinking about it. It is not something that will hold up as a favorite book of the year or anything like that. It just was a great installment, showed a lot of character growth, and I think that it showed how much that Sarah J Mass is progressing as an author and really improving her, what are the words? She's just getting a lot of things right. Okay, next up we have The Helm of Midnight by Marina J. Lostetter. This is another start of a fantasy thriller series and I'm actually gonna put it in the maybe you'll like it category. Just the more time that passes, the more I realize it's not a series that I really have any desire to continue on with. I gave it like 3.75 out of five stars, 3.5, something like that. And I don't regret reading it whatsoever, but I'm gonna go so far as to say that it's not really for me. I don't think I'm the target audience. I had more issues than not, I feel like, with it. It's not something I ever think about and it's not something that's high on my priority list to continue whatsoever. So I think as more time has passed, the enjoyment has sort of worn off and I'm left with this, mm, I didn't really like it that much feeling. So it's still a solid, and I think a lot of people will love it, but just not me. Okay, same thing for Winter's Orbit. That's probably the one that I enjoyed the least out of those there. It just was one that, oh, was once again sort of too divided. It went in two separate ways and I feel like it needed to pick one or the other, either the political workings of this sci-fi universe or the romance and relationship and courting of these two men in this world. So I did definitely enjoy some aspects of this, but once again, I disliked it more than I liked it. I would probably try from this author again, but I do think a lot of people will love it. It's just not for me. Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire is the latest in her Wayward Children. So I gave this a try again because I enjoyed Over the Woodward Wall so much and I can't remember so, something else I read by her. So I wanted to continue on with this. And while I think that it was fairly good for what it did, I needed more. And that is always my problem with this series of novellas, which is generally why I haven't been reading them. So I think that it touched on some important things, but it was lacking. There was so much to be desired because it was too short for my personal preferences. So I don't regret reading it, but it's not something I loved. It won't stick with me for very long, I don't think. The Black Coast by Mike Brooks, I'm putting pretty far up on the no regrets list. Now this is one I don't really think about often, but I can't wait to continue on with 
the series. I think that it was a really solid start to a new fantasy series. It had a fresh, unique perspective on some things. It did some things different than what I see pretty frequently nowadays. So I'm really happy that I read this and I definitely want to continue on. And I liked it more than a lot of other things that I read this year. I guess the same thing with Dragon Mage. I'm going to put Dragon Mage in no regrets either. It was a solid start to a fantasy series, but it left me with a very, this is a classic fantasy tropey type of world. It wasn't doing something super inventive or original and therefore it didn't leave as much of an impact or make me feel like I'm dying for the sequel. I feel pretty like satisfied with that one and I definitely don't regret reading it but I'm not overly anticipating the sequel. The Girl on the Mountain. I'm still thinking about this one to be honest. I'm going to put this above yeah at the very top. So this surprisingly is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. Not like my top 10 favorites but one I really enjoyed is what I mean when I say that. Um, and it's because of this sci fantasy world. I love the Book of the Ice series so far by Mark Lawrence, and I really enjoy the world building aspects here. So that's why it's going in this category so far up because of what we learned in this installment. This is book two um, to The Girl in the Stars. So had a fabulous time reading this. Couldn't put it down. Dreams of the Dying. Okay, so here's the thing. Sometimes when I make this lit, this tier list in comparison to my favorite books of the year list, it's so tricky because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, okay, this should have probably been a favorite of the year, but I don't think I included it on that list, but I filmed that last week and I can't remember. <laughs> so I am putting it in bomb.com. I thought this was an excellent, excellent start to a fantasy series. Very dark and heavy and impactful. So it's not something that you feel happy reading. It's not something that's fun to read, but oh man, was it good. And I'm very impressed with this author and cannot wait for the sequel. Cannot wait to see what he does next. I absolutely will be picking up more from this author because I think he did a superb job with what he was trying to accomplish here. And I'm so impressed here. Okay, Star Eater. I'm gonna put it at here. Um, and my maybe you'll like it. So second from the top, because here's the thing. It felt like it was advertised as adult. It's an adult book. It reads like young adults. The characters fell flat, but the horror elements were really good. So it got like half of it right and half of it wrong. I wanted more of the world building. There were really cool concepts and ideas presented, but it was lacking in a lot of ways. So I would read from this author again, and I actually love this world that it's in, but I needed more, I needed more answers and I needed the dialogue and such to feel more adult since it is an adult book. So it might be for you, especially if you generally read young adult, if you're interested in fantasy horror and like a dystopian feeling world, maybe give it a try. All the Murmuring Bones goes in the no regrets category. Um, I really enjoyed this a teeny bit more than The Devil in the Dark Water. So no regrets reading it. It's not something I think about frequently, but it's one that I will recommend often. It's one I gave a four out of five stars to. I'm really glad I picked up this standalone novel. It was an excellent book to experience and read the story and put it away. I don't know if you guys feel like that about books, but that's like how my mind sort of separates the categories of how I think about them. So it was important dealing with some like feminist themes. I loved the writing. I loved the setting. I loved the magic, but for some reason, it's not, it's not something I think about often. All right. Path of Daggers. This, this frankly isn't it. So I'm going to put that right above Crossroads of Twilight because maybe Path of Daggers was a teensy bit better than Crossroads of Twilight. Winter's Heart I'm just still putting this isn't it in. I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm going to get so much hate for this. I feel like I really am, but it's okay. That's just the thing is, I know, I know it sounds like hyper defensive when I say this, but I want to come across. I'm not hating on the Wheel of Time series. I am not criticizing Robert Jordan and what he was trying to do. And I'm certainly not trying to discredit anyone who this is their favorite series, but I'm going to finish it. It's just not something I enjoy. And, and I, and I feel like books eight, nine, and 10 had some severe issues in pacing and plot and a lot, a lot, a lot of other things. 
So that's why I'm putting it in This Isn't It. Now, Knife of Dreams, I will put in Maybe You'll Like It because I do feel like it was a step up. I do see why people liked it more than the others coming out of the slog. But for me, for me, it's still not it. But for you, maybe you'll like it. Because <laughs> I know this is like a favorite Wheel of Time book for a lot of people. And I don't understand, but that's okay. We don't all have to understand each other's favorites. Alice in Wonderland. Um, I'm putting this in No Regrets. About at the end. I'm glad I read it to experience that classic fairy tale that has inspired so many things. I feel like I need to read through the looking glass to get more world building in a full picture because that's what some people told me when I said it felt like it was lacking a bit. So we'll see if I do that one day. I am glad I read it or reread it, I suppose. And that's about all my feelings are there. I think I was expecting a bit more out of it than I got. Now, last but certainly not least is Toll the Hounds. And that is one, once again, that I'm still thinking about just behind the Bone Hunters, I guess. So because that was probably my least favorite Malazan book to date, but it has so much packed into it that it's not a, oh, this book isn't good. Did my brain even comprehend everything that was happening? type of I'm still thinking about it so that has to go right near Bone Hunters I did like Bone Hunters a bit more but I'm still thinking about both of those books quite a lot and they just didn't make it to the bomb.com category that Reaper's Gale did I suppose so there you guys have it 58 books that I've read this year so let's let's go over the least favorite to favorite quickly uh we got the midnight library the darkness that comes before the wheel of time slog and persephone station in books that aren't it for me maybe you'll like it in a little bit of wheel of time winter's orbit the helm of midnight star eater and babylon's ashes that's a lot of new releases in that category actually no regrets we've got some young adult fantasy some middle grade fantasy Silmarillion, some nonfiction, a lot of standalones or series starters or series finishers. I feel like pretty good about this category. These are all books I liked, but didn't over the top love in comparison with everything I read this year. It's hard because when you just finish a book, you tend to say like how much you love it. But for me, it's looking at the bigger picture, all of them together. Then we get to the still thinking about it category, a little bit of middle grain, quite a lot of nonfiction. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five nonfiction. I'm pretty happy about that. Some Malazan, uh, some just other favorites I read this year, the parts of series. And my bomb.com list, you know it. Dreams of the Dying, Shadow of the Gods, Piranesi, All of Dune, All of Hyperion, Ninth House, some Malazan, and the Lord of the Rings Tolkien. So I would just like to point out that Reaper's Gale and Ninth House actually belong after the Dune novels and the Hyperion novels within the bomb.com tier. And I'm not sure why I didn't correct that in my final look through. So let me know if you guys are shocked at all by my ranking. Do you feel like you would have put them in different categories? I would love to hear how your ranking of these books, especially if any stood out to you, differs from my ranking. And tell me your bomb.com books and your this isn't it books. Um, I would love to hear and chat more with you guys. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.